what up guys so welcome back to yet another video but this is a bonus clip on uh, particularly the dot kv notation that is actually part of the kiwi app tutorial series so what i'm going to be doing now is just take the bare bones of what we left off for the entire application i know a lot of you guys would have gone through the entire flow and know that we developed an application and uh, now what i'm going to do is just take the bare bones of it and show you guys what exactly does the dot kv notation mean it's kind of a, like a style script kind of a, a way of writing the uh, developing the kiwi uh, app so it's kind of also taking through the knowledge of your usual jquery and css style of writing so that's what i'm going to be doing showing you guys on what exactly should be done to make sure that your dot kv notation works uh, to begin with we just have a simple method like this all right so this is going to be my basic uh, class so if my basic file so what i'm trying to do is i've created a completely new repository so that you guys can also start from scratch if you want to i've created a simple file called my kiwi app dot py and my application is also named as my kiwi app and all these are the basic stuff so if you have to run it just have to do is uh, go here and do python uh, sorry the terminal here just run a uh, python uh, my kiwi app and it opens up to a white screen and that's what we are trying to say also now what i'm trying to do is in this application i'm going to be showing you guys how to do the dot kv notation it's really simple the first basic stuff that you need to do is uh, if you have gone through that you would know that if you are to begin you just go directly in and start creating our init in it and also start writing our application from there but instead of that instead of that you could directly uh, bypass all that if you do not have a very strong sense of writing python you could resort to an already known kind of a programming structure which is the css structure so everything is going to be in form of key colon value so you could just arrange these key colon values and you would just arrive at the application just for the ui part alone so that's going to be the first part of this video the second part of this video is going to take you guys through the actual dynamics of actually button click and all that so if you just complete everything in just one video i'll try to keep it as sweet and as short as possible to begin with what you need to do is to create a simple dot kv file but what should be the name of the dot kv file it's very important if you have to know that wherever you're defining your build method and that build method will have a class name so it's going to be my kv app for me my example here so what you need to do is actually to take this my kv application the my kv app and put everything except the app word in the lowercase that's going to be the name of your kv file this do is create a new just create a simple, uh, I would say file, just create a simple file and just name it mykiwi.kv. All right, so it should be always in lowercase. If you have the word app actually present as part of your class name, remove that. Just create it, uh, just put it as text for now because it just assumes that there is no available plugin if you haven't downloaded it for PyCharm, it won't show the notation. Anyway, so that's going to be the structure. Now, what we are going to do is to, uh, just take this example here and the first layout that we have given, the name of the layout is going to be the my layout. So all again, just use that lowercase no sorry this is this should be the normal case whatever you have written your application in the form that and we'll just go for the indentation first it's everything is going to be in the form of an indentation so it's not in like it's not like example that you're writing it's going to be in the form of indentation so make sure to do a one tab space and that's where you start writing so what we can do is directly call a simple label here and come back and another indentation and that's where you put your text and you would say this is a sample label all right so that's it now that should be the structure let's see if it works we'll just close this thing up and we'll fire it up again i think the text is in white color so you're not able to see what you can do is just remove this clear color from here and we can just see it for ourselves and how it works as you can see this is a label and if you know that if you know something that is going to be in the very bottom corner of the application and it's also making it look like as if we made some mistake i'll tell you guys what really happened there but for now let's continue writing our next one which is going to be a button let's create a simple next let's create a simple text input right text input and we're going to be giving it a multi line is going to be true and we're going to go with a simple button and the button is going to have a text which is submit. All right, so this is going to be the structure of the application. Let's see how that looks. All right, it looks really bad because the widget, the my layout is actually directly inheriting a widget. And what we also need is to look into writing the entire thing inside a grid layout. So what I'm going to do is just take all these things 
and create a simple grid layout as my uh, as my parent push everything inside that uh, as you can see it will start from giving you all kinds of trouble as soon as you start trying to indent it properly and also it's also important to note that it has to have a column of one so it's going one column one below the other now try to save it up and we'll close it and run again and you can see that it's much better uh, this way because it's one below the other at least that's that's we can see that now this is going to be a problem for us why this is happening is because as as the base uh, widget is going to be our parent it's automatically going to align to that widget's screen size only we are not we need explicitly tell the my layout app that the grid layout for example here to actually go and set to the size of the entire roots uh, application so roots was root here is the my kiwi app so you need to go to the root and just set it to the entire height and width so what you can do now is to go inside the calls here instead of column we're going to give it a size and we're going to say root dot height comma root dot width save this up and run it as you can see it's completely now present and i don't know what really happened it should be with my height i guess i presume awesome right now it's as we expected it to be it's because it's with comma height not just x y anyway this is the format now i have a button have a text input have a label as well now i can also look into making this much more easier by just controlling the position of it i could say i could even say the height and width to be minus 200 and this to be minus 200 and if you run it it will just show me one left corner this is actually to the last left, left corner you could control that by even making it the position as 200 comma 200 so that it's actually positively placed run it and it's come should be zero uh, run it uh, okay it should be 100 comma 100 sorry Awesome, right? So it's now positively placed in the center of the screen. And also we are able to see the label and button and everything. So it's the text input is present. That's the first half you've done. If you want to make it much more easier, much more cleaner, you can just go ahead and start indenting your grid layouts one below the other and you will have it. The next now is going to be talking about what happens, what, how should I actually write a callback for a button click? And that's very simple again by just defining a simple globals first. So what's a global in .kv? The .kv is going to communicate with the dot pi file by the means of the globals only so what you can do is just create a simple key value pair i could say like a text field and i could name it text input or this is going to be the key by which my dot pi file is going to talk and the, this is going to be the label that is going to be present as part of this text input and i can actually now access these values through that so every every key every widget is going to be taking a simple again another uh, another key called id where you can now define the text input id so there's going to be text input this is actually referring to this one here and that has the key of text field now what we can do is easily refer this one right refer your text input value by directly accessing my text input text field from my uh, my kiwi app so even before you do that there's one more stuff now and that part is completed for your dot kiwi come back to your dot pi file and start with from kiwi dot properties import object property so what is happening here is that we can now call a variable that is going to be referencing this text input by the means of our id text field directly in kv app by just calling my text up in my object property so how do i do that the first thing i'm going to do is that i'm going to say text input is equal to object property of text field is going to be object property of none so what this text field will do is automatically refer to this field here so that's the communication that the python kiwi python's dot pi file and your kiwi file is going to handle now we have created the communication channel here so we are now going to easily access to dot text field directly here 
next thing that we need to do is to draw, now see how do we actually write a callback so callback writing is actually another simple way uh, if you guys remember the button has an automatic bind method which is the on press method so we need to now give a callback here that when clicked will actually show me the answer right so what we can do is actually go here remove the pass from here because you know no longer need going to pass we're going to create our first method which is going to be the um, button click and if you want to get pass instance here if you if required and we can say just print that what is the value that is going to be coming from the text field you can print that so we can say uh, text field that text was clicked Okay, it's on this all because it's a class variable. Let's see if that works. And you can also even put the instance and say, uh, R button was clicked. All right, let's see if it runs. I'm pretty sure it should run this. Let's run this application. Hopefully nothing happens. Let me type something like, this is a sample text field experiment and click the button oh okay now nothing happens because we haven't still given this method here we haven't bounded the method here so how do you do that again as we did for here we did root dot with we can access our methods or callback methods by directly calling uh, root dot button click so as soon as you do that it'll automatically go and search for that method and we are actually done we could directly now say this is an experiment the click uh, it throws in error uh, instance is not required all right instance is not required that is because now let's search if my understanding is right it should work this is an experiment all right this is an experiment was clicked now that is cool that is cool but how do i actually pass my buttons text also inside that because we haven't given it a value of text here okay we need a button button text and you can take this and take this and put it here and also create a simple quick object property for this and okay initially defined now we can do this now we can say self dot self dot button now it should work let's see let's see if i'm right i didn't pass anything here actually and i didn't pass the button value here ah uh, work please work awesome okay i'm right so we are not going to be sending i mean sending the instance variable here instead we're going to be just uh, writing everything in the form of an object property uh, giving it the id tag for that and just pulling the value from this. this is going to be a much more easier way of doing it if you ask me but but the problem is we are also again going to live and uh, come back and write our own callback message everything in the form of a dot py file only like in the form of a python file only so it's up to you guys to choose what is easier if for example if you are uh, comfortable writing it this format it's going to be easier but also you need to consider that if you have a very huge ui file uh, this might seem a much better option because all you need to do is just categorize your dot kv file along with your dot pi file and just segregate it in that format and just build the application out that way anyway so that's going to be the whole idea behind what we did with our dot kv hope you guys did learn something and let me catch you guys in the next video uh, should be end of the series for now have a super awesome day